So after iris and shutter speed, the final aspect of exposure is the ISO, or what they used to call ASA. The ISO has changed over the years though, and what it was once for film has in a way trans translated into digital, but slightly different now. So the ISO or ASA became a rating system to say how sensitive a piece of film was. Now, back in the day, film was made of crystals and they were actually reacting to the light chemically and you'd go through the whole process of exposing that image in the darkroom and securing that image into the film. Now, a hundred ISO meant that it had, the film had very fine crystals, that you'd have a very clean image, but it would also require much more light to expose that image. On the other side, let's say a 1600 speed ISO meant that you had much larger crystals and that you could take photos in much darker situations, but you would also have a much grainier image. You would be able to see these crystals in the film. And a lot of people say that they love film because you had a texture, because those crystals were random. They created a different look to them. Today, you have the ISO principle in digital photography, but it, it's all created from a computer. It's all ones and zeros. And you get certain looks that you could only get with film that you don't get in digital nowadays. So today, in modern photography, digital photography, we still use the ISO rating system. It's the same numbers. 100 ISO means that it'll be less sensitive and require more light. And 1600 ISO means it'll be more sensitive and you won't need as much light. The, the really exciting thing about today though is that cameras are getting much more sensitive and you're able to shoot at 3200, 6400, one camera is shooting 400,000 ISO and getting a fairly clean image. Some cameras can see better than our eyes at night. So as you increase your ISO in the digital age, you still have to worry about that grain, the same as you did in film, but slightly different today because it's a computer reproducing an image that isn't actually there, whereas the crystals were reacting to actual light. This is all dependent on the camera you're using and how it reads light, how it reads grain, how it reproduces grain, and ultimately the only thing that I can tell you to do is go test. What is your camera capable of doing? Some cameras, 6400 still looks great and you have a nice clean image. Others, 6400 will look like red, green, and blue dots. So another factor in this is your sensor size and how sensitive can your camera actually get because although the ISO rating is always the same, a full frame camera versus a crop sensor camera is going to have radically different sensitivities. What the full frame sensor allows you to do is have more light coming into your camera and a greater area for that light to expose on. When you look at an iPhone, for example, you have a tiny sensor in there and it's pretty incredible the images you can get, but the ultimate downfall is when you go into nighttime and it's really hard for the camera to see at night. A professional camera though, like the Nikon D800, has such a large sensor that you're able to see in very low light situations. So remember that although the iris and the shutter speed affect how much light come in, your ISO rating is going to ultimately affect how sensitive is your camera. The best thing you can do is go and practice and see what your camera is capable of. What ISO rating do you prefer, but what are you okay to sacrifice? When is grain okay and how sensitive are you willing to go?